What's up guys, Ender Unknown here. I'm back for, what is this, episode 6? I don't know. I should have maybe looked. Of the text-based adventure C-sharp tutorial. Today we are going to be working on sounds, and this is going to be going to be another short video that will explain a basic concept. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create your sounds folder. Now, I can't show this because my video recorder is fickle and won't let me record Windows Explorer, or whatever it's called, the File Explorer. But all you have to do is go into the program area that you saved this project as. There should be a folder inside of that called bin. Double click on that. There should be another folder called debug. You should double click on that. Inside should be an exe and your saves folder from uh, a while ago when we did that. Was that two weeks ago, three weeks, some, some time ago, uh, you're going to want right to click, right click and create a new folder, and you're going to want to name it, uh, well, you could do sounds or music or whatever, doesn't really matter, it's just going to, you're just going to want to name it something, but remember that name, it is case sensitive, and then inside is where you're going to want to put your WAV file, and you're also going to want to remember the name of that WAV file. Uh, if you guys would like a tutorial on how to make files, or sound files, I can show you. I'm not very good at it myself, but uh, there are probably plenty of other tutorials out there. I would recommend the free program Audacity. That's really good for just creating stuff. So I'll leave that up to you. If you really want to see it, I can uh, figure out how to make a tutorial on that, and how to make the, the sounds. But yeah, you're going to need a sounds folder inside of that bin dot d or bin slash debug directory and then you're gonna want the wave file inside and however you want to name that that's fine but you just need to remember the name for both of those so the first thing we're gonna do is in our program folder we're going to add another using system dot media which is gonna give us access to the sound player you guys can add sounds wherever, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to show you how to do it. And we're going to be doing it in the print to add a typewriter-like text sound. Now, I do warn you, my sound is not good. The mm, the sound I made is not does it does not sound like a typewriter. It sounds like a machine gun more so. But uh, <laughs> I'll do my best. So we're just going to want to create a sound player called sound player or whatever SP. And that is going to equal a new sound player. In our parentheses here, we are going to want to add the string location of where it is. Now, this is why it's important that you remember where you saved that file. Because for me, I'm pretty sure... I'm going to go look here. Uh, yeah, it sounds... So for me, it sounds... This would be your folder name and then a slash, and then my wave name, which is type that wave. So that's the uh, directory where, or that's the file path to where it's located at on my computer. And we're not going from the C drive, we're just going from where the exe is stored. That's why you need to put the folder in such a specific area. Mm. So we, yeah, we have our sound player. Now, making a sound is actually surprisingly easy, so... Uh, sound player dot play looping. This is going to loop our sound. Uh, so what this type sound is is it's like the it's a key press. I mean, again, it's not very good. It doesn't sound right for me. But if you have a really nice key press wave file, I'm sure this would sound pretty cool. Uh, you have a sound player, and then you just press play looping, and uh, yeah. Then at the end. We're going to want to stop it, so sound player dot stop, and that should be all good. So it is going to play the, it's going to start a new thread, which is like, I don't really know how to explain threads. They're above the scope of this video. Uh, it's like an alternate line of, or set of code that is running at the same time simultaneously. So it's going to start a new thread playing the sound over and over again. It's going to type all the characters, and then it's going to stop the... Hmm. Rapid playing. This is also how you would make a music. So at the beginning of an encounter, you'd start looping a 
music sound. So, like, the type sound is just a sound effect, but it would work with the song as well. And maybe I'll show that in a future video or later in this video. But this is actually all you need. If you have everything in place, we should be able to just run it. And whenever this print method is called, we'll hear that typing noise. So I'm going to go into the program, and we'll, I'll be back. Okay, uh, we are back, and I added a little key block. So I'll be quiet, and we are going to demonstrate how this works. Okay, definitely not a beautiful noise. The L just happened to be the key I pressed, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, added, I had to add a read key so that it would... Hmm. wouldn't just play immediately. But yeah, so that is how the sound is added. That would be it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Ender out.